Welcome to Herman Hits the Road. I'm Ads and this is Herman. And the bad news is Herman has failed the MOT. Uh, the list is a long list of failures and advisories. Uh, but the good news is in this video, we're gonna be showing you how we fix it. Well, let's go through the uh, MOT, shall we? So repair immediately. So these are the things that it failed on. Uh, headlamps, their aim is too low, both of them. Brake hose, remember we did the brake hoses to replace the calipers? Probably where, I mean, we checked the hoses and they look fine actually. But remember we twisted them a bit? Yeah. Could have done some, could have cracked them in. But I mean, when I bled them up, when we bled them up, they, they looked fine. Right to me. Yeah. yeah, so the brake hose excessively deteriorated near side front. Suspension arm ball joint excessively worn, so we're going to replace both sides and we, in fact we're going to replace all four uh, brake hoses as well, not just the one that uh, needs repairing. And because of the brake hose um, deteriorating, we've got uh, brake inefficiency on the front as well, so we need to, well, yeah. that'll, hopefully that will be fixed. Yeah, that was, that, that was, that, that, I was watching that, it was minor. But anyway, it doesn't matter, it was out. So, so these are our advisories. Uh, the rear silencer is in poor condition. It's been in poor condition for eons. Um, just kind of waiting for that to blow <laughs> to get that replaced. But that is one thing we might be replacing in the near future anyway. Around the front suspension area is uh, a slightly corroded and it just says uh, it's uh, not considered excessive. So we're going to check that out. Brake pipe corroded or covered in grease and other material at the back. So we're going to take a look at that as well. Yeah, see the thing is when a good MOT tester, and this guy's good, Anything they'll pick up, they'll advise and they'll notify. Mm. Just, so, just to say they've seen it. Yeah. It, it, even though, you know, 30 cents from a low bearing member, the slight corrosion starting, it's actually a good thing because one, it gives you a heads up, and two, it, um, it, it shows that he's looking and he's noticed it and he's put it down. Yeah. It. So yeah. it's not just going to, oh, you, you know, yeah. that's, that's good. So you, you want you want to take your vehicle to a guy like this because at least you know when you it's, when it's, when it's, when get the ticket, he's had a real good look mm. at it and you're all good to go. You know? Yeah. So, Chaz, what are we going to be working on first of all? I think the first thing I'm going to try and do on these is, um, I'm dreading it to be honest with you. It's the bottom ball joint because they bolt directly into the bottom of the hub. Okay. And one, they're a bit of a pig to get on. And two, yeah. they've been in there 22 years. Right. So, and they just unbolt. They don't, you can't, you can't, a lot of ball joints, you can grind the, the, the bolts off and take the ball, these bolt directly well, into the Well, we need, a, I don't think, so if they snap off in the hub, right, then you're in a world of pain. So so cool. Oh, I see. So it's the bolts you you have a you have a worry with. Mm. So we've got a ball joint, new one, and it bolts up onto the bottom of the hub. So if you can imagine, there's the bottom of your hub that sits like that, and the bolts come up underneath. So the the thread is in the hub. That's what we've got to be careful of the thread being in the hub. Now, what I'd advise you to do is, is to Try and get these loosened off first before you touch this. If you can get to the, all of them without having to disturb the wishbone going onto this, and when you've got these loose, tighten them up again. Then undo this. So if you undo this and you take out the wishbone, you're trying to get these done. The legs swinging about. Yeah. Yeah. So get these undone first, then lift them back up again. Then you've done it. And then when you undo this, you need to they call breaking it, separating that people say breaking it, break the ball joint, you're not breaking it, you're separating it. Um, it will sit like so and it will be pulled up tight because it's, it's if you look at that it's a taper. Yeah? Yeah. So that goes on there like that. So what you do is you put a ball joint separator. Oh. Like so and tap it in gently until it separates it. Um, if you're ever taking a hub or anything off and you're not changing a ball joint, try not to use one of those because they can split the boot. Then you need to put the new the dust cover, you need to put the dust covers on again. Some people just give the uh, a wishbone a tap on the outside and it separates. And other people put a windy one in, so you put it goes out and you wind it up, turn yeah. it out, and it pops it out. Yeah. Um, if you are going to use one of those forks, just be really careful you don't split that boot. Because I've known people to have to, to separate the ball joint from the wishbone to change the wishbone or something like that, 
They put it back on again, tightened it up, gone back to the MRT station, it's gone, boots flip, mate. Right? So this is, what is this? It's a ball joint separator. Right, yeah. Same sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you tighten that bolt down there. Yeah, it splits it. And it pushes it out, yeah. <coughs> but I've had these, I've had one of these once, it must have been a cheap one, it wasn't mine. And so, oh yeah, I've used this. And, uh, That's probably a cheap one, yeah. and it wasn't yours. And <laughs> it's this, mine. And, and, <laughs> it, and this pin shattered. Oh, really? The, the Yeah, and I've never seen it like before. It must have been, a, I don't know where it's from. I don't want to slag any country off, but it's shattered. And a bit of it's pinged out. And I felt it go by my face, dug into the toolbox behind me. That's how bad, that's how bad it went. It went crack. Dug into the toolbox. Wow. Yeah, so when you have an experience like that, you think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He just uses this is your dinner fork though, isn't it? Come on. You use that for eating spaghetti. No, <laughs> eating <yeah>. your chops. <laughs> eat your chops. <laughs> I use, I use it for cornflakes, it's rubbish. <laughs> or soup. Rubbish for soup. These are all bought from coastal motorhomes. And uh, if you wanna if you fancy a discount, check out the description below. There's a code in there which you can use in your checkout online. We have jacked Herman we got two axle sands either side and Chaz has already taken the wheel off and let's take a look at uh, some of the issues so here's the uh, lower ball joint that we need to replace up here we can just about see some seepage from this brake hose here well that's not a spanner that's so, a... so if you get the ball part of a ball peen hammer yeah. Right. Now this has been on there a million years, or 21 years, slight exaggeration, but there you go. Yeah, and it's gonna be tight. So what you wanna do is literally just, with that, but don't run a nut off, obviously. Give it a couple of shots, like that. And everyone says, oh, that's not gonna do anything. Whoa, look at that. That was easy. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <one. laughs> so as you tried that though, I mean, was that just a little bit of magic or uh, a, bit, a little bit of magic? A bit of magic. No, I haven't tried that. No, no, no. Well, you you don't try it. No. I put the gun on, then it won't work. That's it. One more. That's it. This uh, socket here, just so everyone is aware, is an 18 mil. That's not a lot. 17. No, it's 18. Is it really? Okay. I can, oh. I can read. Did you try? Did you try the 8 17? It, it wouldn't go on. Okay. So when I, said you. when I said to you, was it a, when I said to you earlier, was it a 17? And you went, yeah. Was that just like? No, I had in my hand a 17. Yeah. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> As Chaz laid on the floor using the tools to remove the four bolts, I assisted by turning the steering wheel so that he could gain better access. After loosening the four bolts, we had to remove the main ball joint nut, which was very tight, but it eventually came off. Wow. Next, we split the ball joint using the fork Chaz uses to eat his cornflakes with. There you go. We also removed the nut on the end of the drop link to help lower the control arm, although it didn't move much. Removing the ball joint was a bit of a struggle. Of course, we were fighting against the suspension and we didn't want to pull the drive shaft out of the gearbox because it'll leak oil. In the end, the fork was a tool to pry it out. Ah, it's just when it fell back in. There you go, there you go, there you go. Oh. So I've put just nip that up in the vise, yeah? And um, that's the suspension going up and down. Yeah, See wow. There? See that? That is incredibly... If you move it up and down, you'll feel it. Now try the new one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> no, it's matching up. Make sure they're okay. Yeah, okay. Well, other than this being a bit more raised, but that's... Um, Not really about that. That's just where it really lines up. So what we've done is clean these bolts up. The edges are nice and clean now. Mm. And there are tensile bolts, so yeah, that's all good. Now, so they're not rounded off. They're actually. not. They're no, not rounded so they were off. Just, no, um, they were just. Yeah, being they were just, stubborn. Yeah, they were just being stubborn. So I've cleaned. I've cleaned the thread up in the hub. Right. Okay. So 
Now, if you look at the, the bolts, are more or less the same, but these have got a locator on them. Mm. So that makes them easier to locate. Yeah. Where these haven't, because these are designed primarily to have a nut on them. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, because these bolts are in such good condition, put these back in again with sure. a little bit of Loctite on them. Yeah. Now for the fun part, putting the new ball joint back in. It was harder to put the new one in than it was to remove the old one, probably because we were a bit more gentle and didn't want to damage the new one. Can you punt the jack for me? In the end we resolved to jacking the hub up, but neither of us liked the idea because of the risk of damaging the brake disc. Oh, here, we here we go, done it! Right. Woo! Here you go. Woo! Right. So the new bolt is going on. So what's the torque setting for this then? <laughs> it's called it's, a it's called a Chaz. It's, it's, Newton's uh, got something measured up. Having a book, it's under FT. <laughs> With one side done, we worked on the other side, but this time we did it a different way. Just so you can see what we've just done. Here's the hub. There's the strut up there. Okay, and then the strut and the hub are connected with those bolts there. which have now run the floor <laughs> which are now on the floor yeah so now we just should be just have to lift the hub up so it should be a lot easier than it was with the other side yeah yeah it's out now there you go it's out oh well, that's a lot easier than the other <laughs> side <laughs> Straight in. What we managed to do is use a ratchet strap to get the uh, strut out of the way. So that's both ball joints done. Now onto the brake hoses. As you can see here, this hose is a bit leaky. So we're going to replace this and might as well, while we're at it, replace the others. This side and the other side. So you guys have seen us doing this before in a previous video and I'll put a little card at the top of the screen there so you can uh, go and watch that. It's going to be a simple matter of taking these hoses off and replacing them. The new hoses didn't come with new clips so we had to reuse the old ones and they weren't easy to get off either. One, and of course after two, the new hoses were fitted three, we bled the brakes. Four, I had the hard job down. while Chaz just had a little lie down. Right, so we've now bled the brakes. The brakes are all, all nicely done now, but take a look at this. Now you look at that, that. That's the uh, liquid it, that's just... And it is, it's amazing because we had these off like uh, just under a year ago. And what's happened is, all that there, that's the brake fluid. Look at the colour of it, look. Mm. Now there was a bit of grit in here from other bleed jobs, but I mean, that, that fluid, it can feel it. Yeah, and that's, at, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. final thing that we need to do to get Herman through the MOT is uh, align these headlights. Now the history about these is that the headlights are actually uh, on a vacuum so when the engine um, is running the vacuum sucks on the lights I suppose and then pulls them out so you can actually level them from inside. That stopped working, we removed all of that and uh, of course there's nothing p pushing against these lights anymore. So uh, we need to level them manually. If you haven't got a, a deflector lens to level the lights, like you would have at the MOT station, and to get it close enough so when you get to the MOT station they can adjust it for you on there better get, is that um, from 25 feet or 5 feet roughly, so 25 feet away or 5 feet away, use your garage door or wall, make a mark on the wall at the height you think the headlight should be, can you find that? Um, manufacturers, um, find the manufacturer up to find that, or um, look it up on the internet, or from five feet away. So I usually just get a board, put a, a mark on it, and I've marked that at 82 centimetres. I'm going to put Herman's lights on it and see how far we're out either side, and then try and adjust them so we get it around about this mark on each one. That'll give it a fairly safe um, height. height to drive, yeah. so we're not blinding people or you know, plane spotting or whatever. Then we get to the MOT station and we'll ask them if they will kindly level it up for us. 
And then um, then we know that they're definitely the right height. Then this is a rough way of doing it. Yeah. So we can get to get it in the ballpark. Yeah. If you haven't got the appropriate kit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So the lights are on. And this light is not too bad, actually. Quite a little bit. You see, there's these two bolts which we need to uh, adjust. And we're using a eight mil socket. Maybe one for me. Oh, there you go. So that's uh, in the park. It's in the. Yeah. That's where we are there. So. Yeah, that's right. I've uh, removed this main light here, this uh, headlight, uh, and the reason for that is we weren't able to uh, adjust it enough. And it, when we did adjust it, it was all wobbling around or whatever. So it's no good. So I've had to take it out and. Um, We'll see what the problem is. I've ordered a kit, uh, that's coming in the next few days. Uh, but to repair it, I want to show you what I do, I'll put that in another video for you, uh, which we will see up here. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna quickly jump to where we actually get the headlight and adjusting again. There you go, so we've finally got the light in, uh, adjusted it up, as you can see, just there, it's all uh, in the right place, well we hope it is. Uh, it's five meters away from the light and uh, this is 83 centimeters off the ground. The ground being not very level or anything like that. So uh, hopefully that will do. And if it's not, the MOT station should be able to uh, adjust it all up now. All we need to do now is go for a retest. We are back from the MOT retest and uh, I am happy to say that Herman has passed the MOT. In the end, what we had to do was replace or sort out both uh, lights. This one uh, broke as well as this one. And uh, there was a lot of cursing I may like to add. Uh, but anyway, we did it in the end and um, we're now safe to drive on the UK roads. So if you enjoyed this video and it helps you get through your MOT, then why not give this video a thumbs up? And uh, if you enjoyed it that much, maybe you should consider subscribing and don't forget to click that notification bell. Until next time, thank you again for very much for watching. Bye-bye. Smug mode.